Welcome to Alexa Online and now we're going to talk about some more astronomy and in particular we're going to talk about the Sun and there is a tremendous picture of the Sun uh, just take a look at that it's just a, a beauty to behold but what is this thing what is the Sun well the Sun is a star just like there are trillions and trillions of stars in the universe As a matter of fact way more than trillions so when we take a look at a picture like this and notice how, of course, this is a picture of a very famous nebula, the Triffid Nebula, but notice all the little points of light there. Every one of those things is a star, just like our sun. Our galaxy, the galaxy where we live in, has about 250 billion stars in it, like the sun. Some are bigger, some are smaller, but in totality, 250 billion just in our galaxy alone. So what is this thing? What is the sun? What is a star? Well, the star is composed mostly and let's just jump right to that. Let's see here. Composition. What is it mostly made out of? It's about 74% hydrogen, about 25% helium, and then the remainder 1% are all the other elements on the periodic table. So yes, we do find everything on the periodic table inside the sun at some level of, of, uh, of density, but primarily 99% of that star is composed of two different gases, hydrogen and helium, and of those two, about three quarters is hydrogen. Hydrogen is the most abundant element in the universe. Matter of fact, about three quarters of the whole universe is made out of hydrogen, so it's no wonder that stars are made three quarters out of hydrogen. But how big is this? How big is this thing, and how far away is it? Well, most of us know, well, I don't know if I can say most of us know, but most of us in the astronomy world know, that the distance is about 93 million miles, which is about 149,600,000 kilometers. Now, that's the average distance because the sun, uh, the Earth goes around the sun in an elliptical orbit, so sometimes the Earth is quite a bit closer and sometimes the Earth is quite a bit farther away. So typically the Earth, the distance between the Earth and the sun varies from about 147 million to about 150 uh, 52 million kilometers. So there's about a 3% difference in the distance to the Sun from one point of its orbit to the other point of its orbit. Light distance wise, how far is the Sun in light units or uh, light travel units? Well, it takes light about eight and a third minutes. So about eight and a third minutes for light to travel from the Sun to us. So the distance between the Sun and us is about eight and a third light minutes. Angular size, how big does the sun look when we look at it in the sky? And so when we look at it from our vantage point, the earth, and we want to measure the, what we call the angular size of the sun, it's slightly over a half a degree. It's about 32 arc minutes as we call it. So this is oh, not arc seconds, that would be very tiny, arc minutes. So it's roughly about one half of a degree in size, angular size in the sky. Radius wise, how big is the sun in radius? Well, the radius is about 696,000 kilometers. That's quite a big because if you compare that to the Earth, the radius of the Earth is about 6,378 kilometers. So you can see the vast difference between those two. It turns out the radius of the Sun is about 109 times the radius of the Earth. Wow, that is quite big. So when we were to draw the Earth there, it would just be a tiny little spot like that on the Sun's surface. The Earth is very, very tiny compared to the Sun, but the Sun is enormously large, of course. So we can say here 696,000 kilometers. Mass-wise, the density of the Sun is about 1.4 grams per cubic centimeter. That's the average density. So it's a little bit denser than water on Earth, but it turns out at the very center of the Sun is much more dense at the very edges, the sun is a lot less dense, but on average it's about 1.4 grams per cubic centimeter, which gives us a mass of about 2 times 10 to the 30th kilograms, which is the mass of about 333,000 Earths. I think it's a little bit less. I'm exaggerating. I think it's about 332,000. But who cares about 1,000 Earths or not? When it comes to that many, it doesn't make a lot of difference. But in other words, if you were to put the sun on a scale on one side and you want to put Earths on the other side to balance it out, you would need 332 Earths to balance out the weight of the Sun compared to the weight of the Earth or the mass of the Sun to the mass of the Earth. Volume-wise, since the Sun is less dense than the Earth by quite a factor, you would need about 1.3 million Earths to fill up the Sun. 
In other words, if the sun was hollow, and you could open it up and start filling it in with earths, put earths in it, you would need 1.3 million earths to fill the sun. So the, the sun is just an enormous large object. Temperature-wise, on the surface, the temperature of the sun is about 5,700, 5,800 uh, degrees Kelvin. So I like to use the, the 5,800 number, and we'll see later why. So it's about 5,800 degrees Kelvin on the surface. That is quite hot. There's no substance in the universe that will not be in a gaseous form at the surface of the sun. It's just absolutely too hot. So any substance, any metal, no matter how hard it is, will completely vaporize at a temperature of 5,800 Kelvin. Luminosity means how bright is the sun. Now the sun is a, brighter, is a bigger star than average, but there's many stars that are much bigger and much more luminous out there. But for a star, the sun does pretty well. The luminosity of the sun is about 3.9 times 10 to the 26 watts. That's the amount of energy that the sun, the sun spews out per unit time. The amount of joules per second or the amount of watts. Now, you remember, light bulbs are rated in terms of watts. We have you know, 13 watt light bulbs and 26 watt light bulbs and 50 and 100 watt light bulbs. Well, here's a light bulb, 3.9 times 10 to the 26 watts. How much is that? What enormous amount of energy does the sun provide for us? Well, that's a huge number. So I thought, well, maybe I can figure out how many power plants you would need to generate the same amount of energy. I thought that would be a kind of nice comparison. So I did some calculations, and a typical new power plant puts out about a half a gig, a gigawatts of power, about 500 million watts of power. And so you would need 1 times 10 to the 18th power plants, a typical new power plant that we build on the earth to provide the same amount of energy as the sun. How big is that number? Well, I believe that number is quintillion, and that doesn't mean a lot to most people. So the way to think of it is it's about one million trillion power plants. So if you need to build enough power plants to put out as much energy as the sun would, you would need to build one million trillion power plants, not a trillion, not two trillion, not a thousand trillion, a million trillion power plants to put out the same amount of energy as the sun. You can imagine you couldn't have enough surface, surface space on the earth to build that many power plants on the earth. The earth would be way too small. It's just an absolute amount of power that the sun provides. But that gives you kind of an appreciation about what that thing is up there that keeps us alive. The sun is basically the source of all life on earth. It provides us with the warmth, the energy, the energy that the plants need in order to grow the, so, so they can use their chlorophyll to turn uh, carbon dioxide into oxygen so we can breathe and it can provide us with uh, uh, food for us to eat and food for all the animal life that's out there. Just the sun is just absolutely the one item up there that keeps the entire earth going and keeps us alive. And these are the specifics of that thing up there and as we go on through the next so many videos, we'll sh start showing you in the, what an amazing thing that is. We'll start learning more about the sun and what the sun is and how the sun produces energy and so forth, what kind of cycles it goes through. But anyway, this is a nice little start. That's our sun up there, 93 million miles away. And stay tuned if you're interested in hearing more about the sun.